Welcome to StellarCast, the Stellar Recruitment Podcast. We're here today with uh, Mark Tobin, the MD and CEO of Philmont Transport. The goal out of the podcast today is to really tell the great story uh, that is uh, Philmont Transport, some of the wonderful opportunities they've got at the moment. Within that, specifically, we're looking at recruiting uh, line haul operators and also mechanics for their business. They've got a number of roles as their business continues to expand. So take the time to listen to all the podcasts. There's some really interesting points and Mark's very passionate about his business. If you know anyone else who might be interested in, in these opportunities uh, over here in, uh, in Brisbane, then please uh, feel free to pass this on. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Mark, thanks for joining us here today. Really appreciate you taking the time to, to tell the follow story. story. Uh, it's my understanding the business was founded in 1984. Uh, but keen to get your take on on how did the business sort of uh, come to be? Uh, what was the vision at that point? And then maybe fast forward to to where the business is today, and just sort of explain the water offering of the business. Yeah, so the business kicked off. Um, it was actually off the back of a, a union strike through Queensland Rail. Back then, all magazines and magazines back then were a central service between magazines and paper, and it was a huge part of our business at the start. But So five men put in a couple of thousand dollars in one afternoon, um, and then two of them hopped in a truck and drove um, from Rockley to Cairns delivering to every news agent. Never thought it would kick off. The rail strike went for, I, I couldn't actually tell you how long it was, but it was just for some time. And anyway, they really got their foot in the door and um, it made them realise, well, they're probably going to use, move this product in a different manner to get it out. Um, and they picked up a couple of days' service. Off the back of that, the media back then, even if you talk about media back then, even when kids went to school, today they go to school with a laptop. Back then, you took a port to school and it was full of books. So because we did the media, we started then do some sort of uh, stationery and then we sort of moved into the general freight. So it really started off just five blokes, a coincidence. Uh, my father was one of those five people. Um, and as that transitioned, it ended up the, the two, there were three partners and, and the two sons being the second generation, bought the third partner out um, of a transition of probably 20 years. So our fathers give, give myself and the other second generation a lot of debt really early in the day. So that made sort of the passion come out of, we had to really stand up and go, what are we going to do this business? We've had massive growth in the business in the last 20 years. From where we are today, you know, going back from one truck today, there's over a thousand bits of equipment across New South Wales and Queensland. Um, the vision back then was definitely with the legacy as we talk about today is service to the customer. So our focus is about we do it today, not tomorrow. We've built that into our values and our number one value is service. Um, where it's become a people business now that drive the values, but the vi- the vision that we had was always about service to the customer. And then we built this amazing network. So today our business isn't really about the customer size. It's about how do we supply a service to a network and being together every town in Queensland and New South Wales every day. We we'll move freight really quickly. That was how it started. It's still very embedded in the business today. We've definitely diversed in different areas of cold, like, um, you know, cold chain, 3PL, and there's, the, 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 the business is diverse over many years, which is probably why we are so successful. So every cent we make, I put back into the foundation for long-term success. So we own all our own properties. Um, we don't build for next week. We don't build for five years. We build for 20 years. But the business of where it went and from the founders and you know second generation and then I, I, um, as the, as about five years ago, I ended up buying the whole lot but with myself and my brother as the sole shareholders now. But we haven't changed anything. It's an amazing story, but what we've done very smart, if I talk about a transport company, we've diversed our revenue streams across so many different areas. So if I talk about COVID or I talk about a flood or um, uh, something happens in Queensland, New South Wales, that affects, you know, whether the bananas have a, an outbreak of um, you know, disease, we have continual flow. So we can actually always have people we never have an issue where we're putting people. I've never had to put a person off. I struggled to get enough people to work for us. <laughs> and obviously, that's why we ended up. <laughs> um, but having a diverse revenue stream has given us a really good structure to maintain revenue, um, profits, and continue to grow the business with a really healthy strategy of, of growth. Yeah, no, I mean, some fantastic points and, and uh, 
commend you on what you guys have built. It's, uh, it's a great story. And I think uh, this part of the podcast uh, today to sort of tell that story. One of the things that my interactions with the business have become very apparent that uh, the values in your business are very much alive, which is great because often they're just words on a wall. Can you touch on on what those values are? You touched on that first value of service, but can you sort of touch on on uh, on those values and what they mean to you? So there's a number of values, and we put these together. It's probably when the second generation really came in and took, I took control of the business and really realised from a football background and and uh, you know, I didn't go to uni, but I knew I, was, I had to find something that made this business come alive. It was definitely the values. We talk about service, and that's about service to the customer. Unity is about teamwork um, and just, you know, Unity, we, we're all one team. We call ourselves a team. There's no ego. We try to remove ego from our business and I've got uh, probably 60 managers now. So um, and a really, really good high-level senior leadership team, but we remove ego. It's Unity. It's, we're all in this together. Innovation, it's about how do we you know, look at solutions. Not It's not about the problems. It's, it's solution-based. Um, integrity is is also linked to the customer around we you know we do it today we don't do it tomorrow and if we we make a mistake it's about how do you turn a negative into a positive really quickly and be open and honest and the care value comes into too and it's about caring for our customers for caring for each other and really you know, if i go through them all that they are alive we put a lot of time and effort into it i still probably put 20 percent of my time into the driving the values and the purpose of the business and the purpose of the business is all about relationships. It doesn't matter whether you're a, a you work for us as our, our people or whether you're a customer or a supplier. It's about that we put back in and and, um, and work on that relationship and leverage that relationship and grow each other's businesses. But the values are definitely much alive. I see a lot of other businesses and I study this through leadership. Um, it's to go to other businesses and see they're just on the wall. Um, we actually have uh, people come in every sort of 12 months and go, tell us, are these alive? Mm. We've linked our behaviours to the values and they're very strong. So not only are they just words, there's behaviours above and below the line that are linked to it. And it doesn't matter if you've been in the business for 20 years, 30 years, whether you're 16 or whether you're 55 or you're at retirement. We all have to display those behaviours and we've all got values ourselves. I'm very lucky that if I look at the people that – have been with me for, for some time and, and it doesn't matter how long you've been there, but it's great to see people actually take those values and, and use them in their everyday life and become better people. Mm. Um, but I think values in a, in a person is, is just a huge part of how we live our lives every day and, and we're very we're very proud of them. Oh, I can tell how passionate you are about them based on that answer. So that's, uh, that's awesome, very much alive, which is uh, great. Uh, I want to talk to you about the uh, strategic plan and how that come about, uh, you were talking about, you know, you're not here for tomorrow or next week, you, you're very much for the long term. But can you talk to us about the strategic plan and uh, maybe the vision or the outlook for the business moving forward? So I think um, having a plan on one piece on a page, and I've been very fortunate to have really good mentors and come to um, with a fast-growing business, you have to know we talk about the roadmap and that is a strategy or a strategic plan. So we're, the way we work, we have a, the highest level that sits – and from the board to the, to the SLT, so we know where we're going. It's broken up in three key areas. It's around performance. Obviously, any good business has to perform. The next one is our customer. So what are our customers? Whether it be a customer, it doesn't matter what level, and it's our people. So those three levels then drop down, and we, we link everything to that. But we've got a clear understanding of the five-year plan of where we're going, a 10-year plan where we're going. We review that quarterly. And everybody's made accountable around that strategic lens. Everybody in the business, whether you're a truck driver, a mechanic, it doesn't matter what part of the business you play, whether you've got a team around you or you're one person, everyone's got an understanding of where we're going, what our vision is. Then every department drops down from that major plan and has a one-page plan. So everybody is linked to the, the big picture mm -hmm. and then we know how we're going to get there. Our strategic plan right now is to continue to put back into our footprint. I look at Australia and I, I look at – we are very um, happy to say one thing with how I get my leadership team to really grow is I always focusing on what is the next step around an acquisition of another business that is aligned with Follamont Transport. Mm -hmm. So I try to buy another business every 18 months. That really stretches my management team around growth and development. And we give them the tools to grow and develop. But bringing a, another culture – into a business and bringing that together really shows you how strong it is. And you think about, if you go back to the um, rugby league, when those teams joined 
and what they became or the new team comes mm. on, you go back and think about Super League. It really shows the strength of the club, and mm. that's what I look at the foundation. Our vision is at the moment now 70% of all freight in Australia moves from Victoria to far north Queensland. So while we're in Queensland and we moved to New South Wales heavily through an acquisition four years ago, we've got about 150 people in New South Wales now, um, we will definitely be going to look, what do we do? How do we link the Victoria? Do we do a JV or do we partner with someone? But we have to use our strength to where we can supply the service that we do. A lot of our freight is fast moving and it is critical services. That's pharmaceuticals, media, bread, um, car parts, uh, hardware. Uh, we do a lot of earth moving stuff, so break down some mines. So we've got to be able to mirror what we've done in these two states into Victoria and the capitalize on the that that larger scale and this huge amount of opportunity there. And obviously our fruit business, our, our cold store business where we do our refrigeration has got huge growth around what's happening in, on the East Coast of Australia at the moment. Now, it seems like a, a very clear vision, which is important. It's, it sounds like there's plenty of opportunity for those that join the business. And it sounds like uh, beyond your strategic footprint that you've got across Queensland and New South Wales, there's broader opportunity with with Victoria, which, yeah. which is great. So yeah. it's a great opportunity for those people joining the business. Our, our big our big push is not immediately the major cities. Mm -hmm. So it's regional. Mm -hmm. It's really mm -hmm. how do we service the regionals and how do we how do we support the community in the regional towns so they've got we've got the growth? I see a huge part of it. You know, we can't just keep, continue to grow Brisbane as much as the most beautiful town. I look at it in in Australia. And Sydney and Melbourne. It's not about growing our businesses there. They're more service centres. How do we strengthen our regional centres like the Townsells, the Rockhamptons, uh, you know, the the Gosfords on the, the Central Coast, or and that, make those communities stronger? I think anybody can get a job in in Brisbane if they really want to. It's mm. it's. If I look, I spend a lot of time away mm. from Brisbane, and I look at the regional, um, and that's why we're so passionate about regional regional on the east coast of Australia. It's, it's about how do we grow and continue to, to capitalise on the opportunity there but put back in. Yep. Now, I'm picking up a big uh, a big focus and a big passion on people. Yep. You, you talked about that in your values. We talked about that before we started the podcast. Can you share some of your philosophies around people when it comes to you know running your business? Yeah, I think definitely our focus is the right people, right place, um, and people need to be given an opportunity to grow and grow with the business. I feel uh, you know, nothing more I love to see, and we've got a values movie to see some some people in that movie been with us for 20 years that started sorting cartons and today are sales managers. And, you know, for myself, I worked in every role in the business. And But to see youth come through, given an opportunity that didn't, weren't given opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, transport, why doesn't, to this day, doesn't represent a trade. And I very we're working all, the industry's working very hard to change that. But it's great to see kids come through the ranks and grow um, through opportunity. So we're very big on training and development. We've got our own train development. And, you know, I've got, I've got a kid at the moment that started, uh, once again, left school, and he's now driving a line all truck. Mm -hmm. So why it's about youth, it doesn't matter youth. It's, it's about giving, it doesn't matter your race, whether you're male or female. It's about being given an opportunity. And one of the things we're very proud of in the last two years we've really worked on diversity so it's how we bring um you know females in and, and treat them as they were the so they deserve to be they can do oh they look at something they do a better job <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, we've, we're very proud about that diversity change that we've brought into our business and we've had to because we obviously with the rapid growth of where australia is at the moment and covid and people not being able to travel get in and out and that's obviously what we're, we're, we're trying to get across the line here today Australia's in a really good place, but we just haven't got enough people, enough resources for the freight task to move. And we've got a real gap, I see, in the next five to ten years around the, the transport industry is how are we going to get enough people? I was at a thing the other night and there was ten business owners and we counted, we had over 350 PWs parked up wow. across Australia that we just on a Tuesday couldn't move because we don't have resources. So we've got a huge gap we've got to work on. So it, it, mm -hmm. all I, I go back, to, our people now where our values and service definitely are the number one value, but our pe what I'm very proud of now is our people deliver mm -hmm. the values mm -hmm. and deliver the service. So we've now become a people business. Um, and it's a little bit like if you, he you heard in the early days where Richard Branson used to talk about, he was very proud to his people drove his business. Mm -hmm. We've got that. We've worked very hard mm -hmm. now 
about putting him back in, giving people an opportunity, listening to them, um, you know, letting them have come up with ideas to do things in a better way. And, and reward and recognition is also a big thing in many industries. And one thing that we've brought in is re- a reward and recognition program. People do a good job. You know, they get a, it's, it might be only small, but it's where they can take their wife out for dinner. So it's just doing those little things. And the people run the business. At the end of the day, myself and my brother don't own the business. 800 people of staff, no matter who the cleaner or um, the COO, they own the business. And the destiny and our growth is all on the back of them. All we do is pay the bills at the end of the day. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> now, I think mean, awesome philosophy. And obviously, it worked pretty well for Branson. So it sounds like you're taking some of those learnings to the business and, and it's working, Amazing really, really, working really well. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's awesome. Now, you touched on it before that you've worked in a few different departments in the business. I understand you, you started in a pretty humble sort of capacity. Now, you're, you're obviously leading the company as managing director. But can you talk to us about how you become MD of this now very impressive business? Um, left school the day I could legally leave school. Um, <laughs> I, and I probably was I was only allowed to be at school for so long because I could play football. So it was back in... <laughs> Touch and go. Yeah, there, where, when we just spoke about the school that we were brought up to, which is a, yeah. you know, it was a, it's totally different yeah. to... And it was, um, I was probably fortunate to where see my brother's growth in the business and a couple of them are in the business now. But um, our parents at that point in time couldn't afford it. Mm-hmm. We had nothing. Mm-hmm. Couldn't afford to go to a public school, mm-hmm. a private school, so yeah. public and yeah. that's what it was and I hated school. Yeah. So I've had a love for our business since day dot, you know, from the point of him being in grade you know, five, six, getting in a Lionel truck on weekends and, and just going away with other drivers from a kid um, in the afternoons, I'd be on my bike at the yard loading trucks. So it was always going to be a big part of my life. I, I, the day I left school, I went and did an apprenticeship, went and started a small depot with one of our long-term people that's still with us today in Rockhampton, came back and eventually then realised in life you've got to make some decisions yourself and grow up. Um, and I was still probably only 22. And I went to one of the founders, being my father, says, I need to, I'm going to have to take, didn't have any vision then of being a leader, but I said, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to go and work every position in the business to become an asset to the business. Father hurt his back. And at the point of even, this is when I was 30, I'm 44 now. So 15 years ago, my father hurt his back pretty bad. But at that point in time, the two of us were on a forklift every night till midnight. Wow. Um, so I'd gone through and worked every role, but we were on the floor every night loading probably 20, 30 B-double trucks, B-doubles to North Queensland every night. I was running PUD for Brisbane Virtue GM role, and he had his back and I said, I've got to stand up here. And that was the point of time where I bought in a share mm-hmm. and got a heap of debt. <laughs> um, so I only had two ways to go. It was either yeah. work really hard. Yeah. Um, and and it, um, from there, I um, took on the role of CEO, the father's transition out of the business. What we did is we, when we started to really build our, build our strengths of our vision of not working 16 hours a day and let's work smarter was when they sort of stepped out. And then I had once again, it was about then surrounding myself with a really good group of people of leaders and go from strength to strength with where we are today. So while I'm very passionate about my people and I understand what we have to do as a business, I don't have the academic side, but I'm very close to our customer base. I know what's right from wrong to run a business, but it's about putting good people around you. Mm-hmm. you, know, you, you go back to football, you see the super coaches. Some of those super coaches come from nothing, mm-hmm. but it's about the, the team that they put around them to grow and be, um, and and the care factor of of knowing every part. I dro- oh, I did, I've done line hall. Um, I was in a truck last week. I drove to Townsville, mate. Um, so I still have done every part. So I know what these guys go through mm. and that's really – office doors are always open, but you can – it's not like you're a CEO that has come back from a um, – done an MDA and that's all performance space. Yep. It, it's it's real and we've been very fortunate to be keep it real. Yep. Well, it sounds like uh, uh, you've got a, a high uh, depth of knowledge around every aspect of the business and, and I think uh, – from a staff member's point of view, you can relate to them because you've effectively worked in, in their Definitely, role or, or yeah. very close to their role, which is a good thing. And, and I guess just leveraging that personal point, moving away from work, obviously you're passionate about growing this great business, but w- what do you get up to uh, when you're uh, not, not, not the, busy at work? The business still runs at least 20% of your mind for what it is. Yeah. So I won't I won't um, shy away from the businesses <laughs> on my mind. So there's a lot of time, but the business, because it is my family, mm. a lot of my friends are part of the business and we are a family business. And I'm very proud to say that I've built a very strong business as family values. So 
if I'm networking, it's usually with people that are, I've met through the business yeah. or work for me. I've been to a few, got a few races, muck around with, live on a property, a few cows. Pretty basic. Um, love the water, but mm. nothing really out mm-hmm. there. And obviously, still love football. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, I probably look at what I enjoy doing in life outside of work. It's actually living your purpose, and that mm. my purpose is to mentor and help people that I, that I care about. So I really mm. put it back into that. Mm. Um, um, when you are with people, it's about how do you, you know, how do you become a better person and, and make them better people. And I enjoy that. I enjoy that part of leadership. No, it's awesome. Awesome answer. Great note to sort of touch on. Uh, now I'm going to put you into sales mode about Brisbane. You talked about the fact that Brisbane's pretty near and dear to your heart. How do you sort of promote Brisbane and, and what do you think people that don't live in Brisbane now might enjoy living in Brisbane? Um, like I said before, I spend a lot of time out and I, I hate having to fly away from Brisbane. I, I love being in North Queensland. Sydney, if I look at Sydney, I look at Melbourne. Brisbane, what I love it is, you know, you look at the Brisbane River and where we are today. Um, this morning, I've already travelled um, from 6 o'clock this morning. I've gone from one side of the town to the other and back in without any issue at all mm. through the tunnels. So it's really easy to move around and get into town no matter where you live. Um, the river's, I think, one of the most beautiful rivers uh, for what it is, and, and, and I think it's the people. Mm. Like there's a difference between Sydney, mm. Melbourne, and Brisbane, the people. Like, we've walked in here today and straight away it's – when I get around, I just don't see that sense of fastness. It, it's, it's got a pace to it. Mm-hmm. But even when you're out and about, um, you know, Yes, we've all got our issues with crime rates and all that sort of stuff, but it's a really safe place. It's a great place to bring kids up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can move quickly from one side of town to the other. You've got the north coast on one end and south coast on the other. You love water. You know, surf beaches around. And then I go to from Brisbane, it, um, it's the cost of living here. Mm-hmm. You know, whether We have seen a huge increase in the last five years, but you still, a family can still earn really good money and live really well without – you know, having to be on those crazy wages as, as CEOs and, and high performers. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a friendly place to be. It, it's a great, I'm very, very modest about it. And, and you know, um, like, it's been a great city for us. Mm. Um, but the sunshine, if you go to Melbourne, and one thing, I, the reason why we end up in Brisbane, so I was an asthmatic. So you don't have that cold mm, mm, issue and that mm. dry air, that that air, you know, from the, the southern states. But I, like I said, I'm very um, modest about Brisbane. It's a great, and Queensland itself is a great place. Yeah, no, I couldn't couldn't agree more with you as a person who's come from New Zealand myself. I think uh, definitely the the weather. I mean, you know, most days you, you just take it for granted. Yeah. Look outside and the the sun shining, which is awesome. Particularly when you can enjoy the 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 beach, the water, the hinterland, those sorts yeah. of things. Cost of living's great, and I think you're earning potential. That's the idea, you know. Yeah. I think that's yeah. it. So it sort of combines to be a nice sort of thing, and, and notwithstanding the environment, uh, to get back if you're going back to New Zealand or other parts, it's a good hub, cheap, yeah. easy to get back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, on that side, of and then that's a great point of what we're trying to achieve here today to travel from one side from New Zealand to to Brisbane. It, it, it's it's not it's like going to um, North Queensland, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. easy and inexpensive. So uh, so that's good. Just wrapping things up. Uh, I just sort of want to hit on a couple of things, but uh, you know, I guess the most important thing is ask you the question: is what do you think people enjoy working for your business, and, and why is Follamont different to any other transport business? To me, I'd say we keep it real. So it's definitely a family business with family values. Um, I'm, I have no intentions of changing that. I have no intentions of selling the business. So you haven't got that multinational. Mm. I mean, we've just done a corporate outlay, and one thing that we're very proud to say, it's personal, it's not corporate. The doors are always open. Um, the management team that I put around me, doesn't matter if it's uh, first level, second level, they have to be real. You know, if they're not authentic and they're not open and they don't live the values that I live, they won't. I will not have them in my business. So that flows down. It is real. We're very passionate about what we are. We care. We care for our people. It is about our putting back into our people. And we'll continue to do that. It's become not a tra- – it's a transport company that's driven by amazing people that are, that are passionate. Uh, I definitely spend a lot of my time putting back into the people, talking to people and driving that strategy with a, that passion feel. And we're very proud to say in the last few years and probably the last 12 months, we've really worked on communication to our people. So everyone knows what's going on in the mm-hmm. business. It's not – you know, even the uh, – I'm not going to declare the profitability, but everyone knows it's a, a business that is continued to put back in for mm-hmm. its growth and its long term, and and we care for our people. And we don't do things half-heartedly. If I talk about you know, some of the things with my workshops, the state-of-the-art, 
Um, I don't build a workshop out of the back of off a shed. It's all they're all. Uh, there, there could be a, a major truck plant workshop, if not better. Um, my equipment, or oh, the Lionel equipment, the PUD equipment is replaced regularly. It's all European or American. It's all fitted out so anyone has to sleep in it. They can. There's a microwave. They've got air conditioners. They're always replaced. With our systems that we set up, you know, we talk about line haul. Our drivers, if they're away from home, they stay in um, you know, new um, driver's rooms. They've got one room per driver, fresh sheets, food. So we really put back in to go, what's the job at TARS anybody's doing the business and how do we make it they, they want to continue to work for us? Because we know, as I said mentioned before, we know we've got a gap going forward. So you've got to continue to put back into how you treat your people and their tools, and we pay above the award. We're always looking to make sure we're a leader of the way we pay our people. We're very, very uh, run the, the business with the board structure, so it's virtually run as a publicly listed business, mm -hmm. but it's not its family feel. Mm -hmm. I, I have no intentions of changing that, mm -hmm. but running your business like that, you've got to continue to put back in to your conditions. Mm -hmm. So looking here today, we walk in here, everything's done properly. We're exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And it's about, you can't sell a service and grow a business if you're going to pull money out mm. and run it on peanuts. Mm. We don't do that. It's the best of everything we can do, we, we do. And I'm pretty proud to say that. I mean, we continue to put back in. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I think, you know, obviously people care about the, the culture and the environment. Sounds like you've got a great context in that regard. Uh, the values are alive and well. You've got good or, or new equipment. Obviously, you've got good uh, conditions of workshops and whatnot. You also talked before about, the different sort of routes or line haul uh, yep. options that are available. You sort of alluded to the the shorter haul where they're home every night, yep. sort of the, the medium for lack of a better definition, and then the, so, the yeah, long yeah. one if you're chasing the money. Yeah, so if you, if you, we've got different roles, and obviously we bring new people and they start on the short haul. The shorter haul is about where you're doing probably a few drops every night, but you're home every night. Um, you get paid a really good rate over and above the kilometre rate, so you, you can earn a wage, but it's not a bit like running – um, similar to probably what New Zealand do, mm -hmm. those short lanes, you're back and then you come back to where you started from, but you're doing multiple drops. So we, we load those rates up because we need people to do it and they've got to be on time and do a really good job. The next thing is the living away line, all that's where you could be in a truck for four days and then you come home and have two or three days off. And then we have our shuttle system. Shuttle system is where you do between four and 5,000 k's a week and you don't really touch anything but the steering wheel. You get out of a company, a new company facility, clean sheets, go to bed for the day. Someone takes your truck or takes the trailers, it's delivered back to you and you come straight down, it's unloaded for you. So we've got those three different sort of areas that we look at and everybody, all those rates, where they're the same, we try and spread that across. What I can say about my business, I'm very uh, believing, is anybody that comes in our business that has got a really high quality or uh, you know wants to have work to where they can work comfortably within the guidelines, they get that opportunity. Um, so you, you've got to, you know, it's the same as, you, you, I go back to football, is if you've got a red-hot football, he's going to play every game because mm, mm, you need mm, him to. Mm, mm. But if you've got blokes that want to have a family, man, and they want to only do three days a week, you can still do that. So we try and be versatile, but if you want to have a crack, mm -hmm. you get the opportunity to do it as long as you put back in and show that the care to what we do is our values and our presentation of our fleet. And so really good people that are, you know, we've got some amazing operators and anybody, everybody's got that opportunity to do that. You can't have a level playing field when you've got different capabilities in um, what people can, can and can't do. But anybody here that's competent and, and can really get out there and want to go, you can earn some really good dollars and, and have an amazing lifestyle. You know, and you can still have your three, day, three days off every second week yeah. um, and one day off the next week. Yeah. So we're versatile, um, but we, we really don't just say, well, that's a run. We're only going to pay the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. We look at the job and go, what's that job really? What does this person deserve when he goes and does that job every night? So there's all those different lines. The same with mechanics, you know, it's the same thing. You want to work night shift, you're going to get paid more. So I can't, you can't yep. pay someone that's home with these kids at night, someone that wants to do night shift, they've got to get more money. But you want to be a supervisor, you're going to get more money. You want to take some um, responsibility around leadership, you're going to be rewarded. Mm -hmm. So there's all those opportunities and, and there's many opportunities in our business. And, and what today's about is actually you know, we've got a gap in our – in Australia, and we need people from overseas to want to come to Australia, and there's opportunities here for people to come over here, whether they live here or you know, come here for two years. We're back in the days of where 
This happened 15 years ago, yeah. and we're on the verge of that again, to mm. where people travelled, whether to America or to Australia or New Zealand to Australia. That's where we are now, and we've, we've, we just want to get on the front foot and continue to go forward. Well, mate, thanks for spending the time here today. Congratulations on the business you built, and we're Thank really you. proud and, and appreciative of the opportunity to support you, uh, you guys embark on this next phase of growth. So I think there's some great things in this podcast that people can sort of uh, connect to in terms of the business and the opportunity. So I uh, appreciate you taking the time to share all that. No, thank you. Thanks for taking the time to listen, guys. Hope you really enjoyed uh, Mark uh, telling the, the great story uh, of Follement and the opportunities that he's got within his business right now. Just in terms of action from here, obviously on the landing page, there's all the details around how you uh, express interest in the opportunities or reach out for further information. So don't hesitate to, to reach out to ask further questions if required. We look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you. Thank you for listening to StellarCast. For trusted recruitment and career advice, contact Stella today.